I take notes of ideas all the time. And this is one I was just like, hmm, I wonder if I can make a feedback effect based on motion. And I did that in some variety here. I've got a couple different variations here. Yeah, there's some cool stuff going on. None of it's too crazy or too complex, but we are going to build this simple one. Just we can should be able to do that in about 10 minutes. But I've made some variations of these. They all right here on this main one. You probably wouldn't want to use this. You probably want to pick one and uh, load these in individually because I mean this runs fine. But if you're making it part of a bigger thing, there's actually grab what you need one or two of these. Uh, but I just wanted to be able to show some of these different variations. We're going to get you to the starting point and then. Uh, and then at the end, I'm going to run through some of uh, what you need to know about these ones that I've packaged together. You'll be able to find these on my Discord, and I'll probably have a link for my Gumroad as well. But it'd be cool to be uh, building a little community that I actually get to know who's a part of it and who's interested and help out with things. So you can ignore all this over here. I just had some, I wanted to be able to switch between me speaking and just some video examples. So the technique is, getting a mask from the areas that are different from frame, one frame to the next. So we want to use a cache and we're set the cache size to, let's say four, output negative two. You have a cache size of two, negative one, depending on what it is. But for this, we are just going to grab a difference and then run our sources between these. And I don't know if, uh, you know, we're still kind of seeing some flickering here. So we've got our difference and I think we're going to want to create two very similar feedback loops from here. So grab a feedback top and for sure we want to level, um, Oh, actually, yeah, before this, we want uh, a threshold top. And now we want to dial this in. So we're seeing, seeing those changes. You know, you could introduce a little softening, but that's going to start actually just adding, adding noise. So, yeah, no, we might want to blur this before that. There we go. Let's I'm gonna put the filter size low, but pre-shrink it a little bit. There we go. Okay. I should actually go in and do that on these other ones. But anyways, I think we can just grab a composite here and let's see over. Um, okay. Yeah, we want to drop that opacity a little bit here. And then you could do a another layer just for kind of smoothing. Um, so I'm going to grab another feedback off of this one. And we're going to do a, let's see, on another transform level, maybe another blur. Let's do another composite. I think we'll just set this one to add. Over. Um, I'm going to make this one grow just a little bit or maybe shrink.
can still kind of see some ghosting. So now I'm gonna turn turn this threshold up a little bit. Okay. So you could use just that initial threshold, but this gives us a little bit more of like a fill in the area kind of effect. And you could do more creative things with that too, but uh, so here, yeah, now we've got kind of a mix of like the harder edge and kind of the blurred region around it. So that should work nicely. Let's give ourselves one more optional blur. Um, that I'm going to turn down for now. And... Now this is, I'm gonna put in a, a null. This is coming from our source. So we're getting ready to composite these together. One more composite. And we're gonna use this operation that I have not, <laughs> that's kind of funny, right? That right there is a thing. But yeah, you can see that's working. But what we probably want, I mean, this could be its own effect where you're only revealing movement and everything else around it's abstract. Um, so yeah, you can play with different compositing types, but we're going to use the XOR, X-O-R. Now that's the opposite of that. We're masking out where it's detecting changes. And then here's where you get creative in there. So this is going to be our third feedback. And then you just put whatever you want in here. We'll do the most generic, obvious transform. Let's do a HSV adjust and a level. And then composite that. As over, I think. Yeah, and then when you drop that composite on the feedback. Yeah, you can see you can see that we're got something happening in here. We'll give this a little rotation. Now we're ready to connect this to what we're actually seeing. Okay. So yeah, now we're seeing this kind of spinning effect. And that if we adjust the HSV, we can do a hue offset and that'll get that'll make this pretty obvious what's happening. Little value goes a long ways because it's iterating every frame is increasing that value basically. So the first one's negative four, the second one's negative eight, or so on. So do negative three, we'll play with the saturation, decrease it a little bit, and get kind of a pastel ghostly effect. I'm going to change the translate to pixels and. Move this down a little bit. Oops, let's do the opposite. Two, negative two. Let's do one. And then you can change the tile to something like mirror or repeat. So anyways, I mean, that's kind of the basis of it. But yeah, so you have a lot of parameters to kind of check affect the changes, but everything's going to kind of affect everything. So if we take this cache and just do negative one, now it's way more flickery. But because we have these layers of feedback, um, there's much less of that strobing effects. So, so yeah, let's try a different source here. I mean, I think I'm used to the feedback looking sharper just because this is pretty low resolution. Um, 
I don't know if changing this to 32-bit float will help. It'll definitely make it run at more resources, but okay. Yeah, that does look better. Um, pretty easy just with a little bit of extra saturation value, hue offset, you start getting into uh, almost that analog video feedback. Uh, small, small, small values get a lot more a lot more nuanced. Uh, start getting to even plus minus nine, ten. You go too far and you start getting this really, really glitchy stuff. And then if I, if I turn down the value here, you can get, make it a little darker. It's just not blowing out. And these are things you can make audio reactive or logic based. Um, but yeah, plugging a speed into a dynamic source. So it's just kind of slowly scrubbing all the way around the cycle and then coming back around again. That's easy. The basis of this is, is easy. So now this is gonna be like part two or act two. Um... Uh -huh.